Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com. Man, it's so nice to say BeYoungMinistry.com without the .blogspot.com in there. So much smoother and nicer. I trust you're doing well, my friends. Today we continue in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, which reads, Although I hope to come to you soon, I'm writing you these instructions so that If I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on, in the world was taken up in glory. That's First Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Having taught on leadership within the church, the apostle Paul turns our attention to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church in Ephesus had begun to abandon sound doctrine. So as a result, there was a need to reiterate the essential message of Christianity. In verse 14, we read, These instructions, which refer to the underlying reason why the apostle wrote this epistle. Not only that which he had written, but also the things he had yet to write. Essentially, the apostle is teaching Timothy the essential of the faith. In verse 15, we read, If I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. The word household used in verse 15 is oikos in the Greek, which does not speak of a building. Very often people refer to the buildings as the church. This is not biblical. The apostle is properly referring to the church as the people, the people of God. The emphasis here is that believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are all a part of a family that is in dynamic relationship with the living God of the Bible. The church is not a part of an organization that is to be treated like a business. However, we are a part of an organism that is actually in personal relationship with the living God. As the Apostle points out, if we miss this most essential part of the faith, we will miss it all. During the first century, the number one god in Ephesus was Diana. Those who once worshipped at the temple of Diana had come to profess faith in the Lord Jesus. And they were still learning of God's ways and how his ways were quite to the contrary to those of Diana. So at the end of verse 15, we read the pillar and foundation of the truth. Paul is saying here, the church is the pillar and foundation of the truth. His point was quickly understood by the folks in Ephesus due to the huge pillars and the large foundation that undergirded the temple dedicated to Diana. It had 127 pillars that supported the massive structure. These pillars were made of solid marble, studded with jewels and overlaid with gold. Each of them were gifts from various kings throughout the world, and each were tributes to those who gave them. The pillar and foundations held up the huge structure. I might say the pillars and the foundations held up the huge structure, which at that time was one of the seven wonders of the world. With the Temple of Diana as his backdrop, the Apostle Paul captured the minds of those who were in the church at Ephesus. 
in the same way that the pillars and foundations supported the temple of Diana. The church is to be a living support system of the truth. The church does not make the truth. We support it. We hold it up. It is a sacred treasure given to us for the glory of God, the good of men, and we must hold it as our most precious treasure. The church does not make the truth. The truth is making us. In verse 16, we read, Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is great. He appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by the angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. The Lord Jesus Christ is the mystery, and he is the essence of eternal life and godliness. The Christian faith is a faith built on the person and the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one at the center of all that we believe. And in verse 16, the Apostle Paul gives us six essentials of our Lord. He appeared in the flesh. When the Lord Jesus came to earth, God became man. The Lord Jesus pre-existed and then took on visible human form. As a result, he made the visible, the invisible God visible to man. He was vindicated by the Spirit. This means he was declared righteous by the Spirit of God. In his flesh, the Lord Jesus was and is the sinless human, the only one. And in his spirit, he was and is God. He was declared to be righteous. And this is why the Father said on two separate occasions, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In addition to revealing to man the God of the Bible, the perfect God-man, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth to redeem hopeless, sinful man. The Lord Jesus was declared righteous by God so that he could save us from the wrath of God. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, we read, He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The Lord Jesus Christ never sinned. But when he went to the cross, he absorbed the punishment of God for all sin so that God could forgive the sin of all who would believe on the Lord Jesus. He was seen by angels. Throughout the earthly life of the Lord Jesus, the angels observed him, watched over him, visited him, and attended to his needs. The Lord Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all of the scriptures and the angels attested to that at his birth, in the garden of Gethsemane, at his cross, and at his resurrection. He was preached among the nations. After his resurrection and his exaltation in the eyes of the holy angels, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ was preached among the nations. He was believed on in the world. The preaching of the forgiveness of sin resulted in the salvation of all who have and will believe on him. The first time the gospel was preached in Jerusalem, as after his resurrection, 3,000 people believed. Belief in the finished work of the Lord Jesus on the cross is essential for salvation. He was taken up in glory. In Acts 1.9 we read, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were looking steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, two men stood by in white apparel. And they said, You men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? The same Jesus taken up from you into heaven 
shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. This, my friends, is the essential teaching that Jesus Christ is God, the Savior of all who have and will believe on him. As a result, he is most precious to us. So precious we guard our personal relationship with him. And we, at every opportunity, preach him crucified, imploring all to believe in his finished work on the cross for the forgiveness of sin and to receive the free gift of salvation through his shed blood. When we lose sight of this one essential, we are all in danger of falling away, which is the subject of the verse which follows today's text. And we will consider those in our next blog and podcast. My friends, I trust this blog and podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.